Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. In the most important news of the day, I'm very happy to report that it's not 40 degrees Celsius in here, unlike the last couple of weeks, so it should be a much more pleasant news corner. The first topic for this week is about Threadripper. AMD has officially stated that third gen Threadripper CPUs are on track for release in 2019, at some point after the launch of Ryzen desktop processors. Considering AMD has released new Threadripper CPUs in August in both 2017 and 2018, it's probably not hard to guess we'll be getting something similar in 2019, but it is still nice that we're getting official confirmation these chips aren't delayed into next year. However, AMD hasn't shared any additional information on what third gen Threadripper might look like. It's highly likely the chips will be based on AMD's second gen Epic design with seven nanometers Zen 2 chiplets, but will we be getting the full 64 core count of the top end SKUs? Will it top out at 32 cores? We just don't know at this stage, although certainly some epic features will not make it to Threadripper so AMD doesn't cannibalize its server chip sales. As for other products, we're getting second gen Ryzen Pro mobile APUs in spring, which are expected to be the same base chip as second gen Ryzen mobile. So we'll be using the Zen Plus architecture and will be built on 12 nanometers. Then we have third gen Ryzen desktop processors coming mid-year. AMD hasn't shared any new information there. When they first teased third gen Ryzen, they also mentioned a mid-year release. So again, no real updates there. There have been a few rumors flying around about exact dates for when AMD will unveil and release these hotly anticipated chips. There's also been some alleged pricing leaks. At this stage though, we don't have any insights to share. In big news for the benchmarking world, and you know how much we love our benchmarks here at Hardware Unboxed, Maxon has finally released a new version of Cinebench, one of the most popular benchmarking tools for testing CPU rendering performance. Cinebench has always been a benchmark that shows how various CPUs would perform in Maxon's Cinema 4D application while rendering a typical scene. Cinema 4D is a popular 3D modeling app used across the industry, so Cinebench has sort of been this synthetic benchmark tool that's neatly related to a real world app, which makes it more useful than just a straight synthetic workload. The problem with Cinebench in recent years is the R15 version of the benchmark has lagged several versions behind the latest version of the actual Cinema 4D app. So it was getting outdated and less useful as a benchmarking tool even though most people still heavily rely on it. Thankfully, the new version of Cinebench that's just been released, R20, brings the benchmark back up to match the current release of Cinema 4D. Several changes have been made with Cinebench R20. It now renders an entirely new scene that requires newer AVX instructions through Intel's Embry technology, which works on AMD and Intel processors and doesn't really appear to be biased to either side. It also now scales beyond 64 threads, which will come in handy as CPUs like Threadripper push beyond that limit. It also drops the useless GPU benchmark to only focus on CPU performance. Overall, it should be more reflective of how modern CPUs should perform in modern rendering workloads. Of course, while Cinebench R20 is a nice tool, it still shouldn't be used as the sole comparison point between CPUs. It's always a good idea to run a number of other benchmarks across a range of workloads to get a better idea of how CPUs stack up. It is neat, you can get a simple number out of the benchmark, this is just one tool in the tool chest. We also still recommend you validate any overclocks on a longer workload, we use an hour long blender test for example. You can expect us to begin using Cinebench R20 for future CPU reviews, so Look out for those, I guess. Get ready for even more USB confusion as this week, the USB Promoter Group has announced a new incoming specification, USB 4. Thanks to Intel opening up their Thunderbolt technology, USB 4 will be based on Thunderbolt and essentially absorb its feature set, including bandwidth up to 40 gigabits per second, power delivery, and support for display protocols. The spec is set to be finalized and published in the middle of 2019, although we do know it will use existing USB Type-C connectors and will maintain backwards compatibility with both USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and Thunderbolt 3, which is pretty neat. A lot of the features that have been revealed so far make it sound like this is just a USB version of Thunderbolt 3, so we'll have to wait on the final spec to see how it differs. Usually it takes several years to go from a final USB specification to the first chips that support it, so while it looks that USB 4 will replace Thunderbolt 3, it's probably still a few years away. Nvidia has launched a new game bundle for their GeForce RTX graphics cards called RTX Triple Threat. It's not a bad deal to be honest, with some cards getting three games bundled with the purchase. 
Battlefield 5, Metro Exodus, and the highly disappointing Anthem. All of these titles use RTX functionality in some form. Both Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus have both ray tracing and DLSS, while Anthem will get DLSS in an update soon. Those who purchase either a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti or an RTX 2080 will get all three games. If you buy either an RTX 2070 or RTX 2060, you get to choose one of the three games. Meanwhile, if you want a Turing GTX card like the GTX 1660 Ti, uh, you won't get anything. At least those who buy the 1660 Ti will be getting the best value NVIDIA card anyway, so not really a huge loss there. The usual conditions apply here. You have to buy a card from a participating retailer in select countries. The promotion lasts until April 4th, and the codes themselves must be redeemed before May 2nd. AOC has a new entry-level 4K gaming monitor called the G2868PQU. It's a 28-inch 4K TN panel with a 60Hz refresh rate and FreeSync, although I'm not expecting to see LFC here as most 60Hz monitors only have a minimum refresh rate of 40Hz. It packs 102% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, 82% Adobe RGB, and it's advertised as HDR ready. However, it doesn't even meet display HDR 400 certifications uh, due to peak brightness of just 300 nits, so I think that probably tells you how good of an HDR experience it will be. This monitor is set to go on sale this month, starting in the UK at £320. This converts to around $350, US, which makes it a pretty affordable 4K display, even if it is only TN. Dell has accidentally leaked the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti for laptops. Notebook Check discovered that Dell's product page for a new G515 laptop listed that some models come with an RTX 2050. Now, that would be interesting in itself, given there is no RTX 2050 at this stage, but when they corrected it, Dell still managed to give out interesting information. Basically, they replaced the text RTX 2050 with GTX 1660 Ti, which means they've effectively leaked the existence of a GTX 1660 Ti mobile chip. Nvidia has only announced this GPU for desktop cards at this point, although you'd think it will eventually come to laptops sitting below the RTX 2060. There's no word on when it might be available, although I'm sure at some point uh, someone at Dell will be getting a stern talking to. Final topic for this week relates to Intel processors. Over the last few weeks on News Corner, we've been steadily updating you with details on the rest of Intel's Coffee Lake refresh lineup. We've had lower end models leaked one week, KF models another week, and T models as well. But there's no need for that anymore because Fujitsu, of all people, has revealed the entire 9th gen desktop processor lineup before Intel has managed to get around to it. None of these chips will be super exciting to enthusiast desktop builders. We know you guys are more interested in stuff like the 9900K and 9700K, but this list does indicate that Intel will add another 32 CPUs to the current lineup that officially includes just nine chips at the moment. This includes models like the i9 9900T, i3 9100, Pentium Gold G5620, Celeron G4950, and even some Xeon E2200 chips. We only have basic information at this point, so core count and TDP, which means we'll have to wait for Intel to fill in the gaps here. Seeing the clock speeds for the Core i9-9900T in particular will be interesting, uh, given it's listed as a 35 watt part, the same with the same eight cores and 16 threads as the power hungry 9900K. We'll also have to wait and see for the full specification list. There's no real indication of when Intel will provide that information. That's it for this week's News Corner. Subscribe to get this segment in your inbox every week. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord community and monthly live streams. And I'll catch you in the next one.